Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a really fun new knife surgery video. I haven't done a knife surgery in quite some time because I've been drifting more towards custom knives as of late. But the question I probably get the most often from my viewers and Instagram followers is where did you get the hardware and scales for your paramilitary series? Uh, I usually bring these knives out as my size references, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3. Uh, and I wanted to make a video where I discuss where I get this, these scales and hardware, and then I'm going to go one step further and go ahead and install a new set of scales that I have from my pal Aramis Akhmadov on my Spyderco Yojimbo 2. So we're going to have an exciting video right here, so sit down and get ready. So, uh, for those of you who are newer to my channel, perhaps you're not familiar with Aramis Akhmadov. Aramis is a Russian scale manufacturer. Here you can see Aramis Akhmadov at aeratech.ru. I recommend that you go check out that website or send him an email at that one that you see here. He's also on Instagram as at Aramis underscore Akhmadov. This guy is a Russian scale producer that... I was pointed to a little while back when I made a random Instagram post saying, who makes the coolest scales for the paramilitary series? And someone showed me a picture of the Grand Line carbon fiber scales from Aramis Akhmadov. And that's what you see here. This is the Grand Line carbon fiber scale. You can see that it is in the grand composition that is the overall shape. And then the line adds this sort of seashell milling pattern to the carbon fiber. The material that you see here is carbon plate, carbon fiber. You know my good friend Carbon Plate. He actually supplied the carbon fiber you see as the background on my channel here. This is real carbon fiber sheet made by him, but he also makes this material. So I connected these two guys. Aramis had previously hesitated to buy this material because it's a bit more expensive than the carbon fiber that he already had sourced. But I said, please, will you do this? I bought the carbon fiber from Carbon Plate, I shipped it to Aramis, and then uh, I had him make these scales. Now Aramis has been converted, he loves this material, and he's gone ahead and bought some more, and actually this carbon fiber is blue resin carbon fiber from my friend Carbon Plate over there. So uh, the two, my two favorite Russian guys right now are these two guys, the carbon fiber manufacturer and the scale guy. So, I've tried to put this together for everyone in the community so that now he's making some awesome scales. He's made more of these types of scales. Go and check out his website and certainly his Instagram feed to see the awesome stuff that he's doing now. Now, uh, no kni th these knives would not be complete without the hardware, so you can see that there's bronze anodized hardware. I got this from our friends over at Blades We Love. Blades We Love is an online knife distributor. They have an eBay store and a website and an Instagram at Blades We Love, one word. If you want to buy the hardware for these knives, I recommend contacting Blades We Love. They sell these lanyard plugs and the full hardware sets, including the clip screws. It's very important to understand that Aramis makes two different types of scales. This is bo these are both the same type where it is deep carry clip compatible. Do you see this right here? On his standard scales, there is a cutout for the standard Spyderco spoon clip. There is a cutout that fits only this clip, and it fits right there as, in the, as on the standard model. So if you're going to use a deep carry clip on a knife, you must ask him for the deep carry option. This is very important. You must ask for the deep carry compatibility option. Also, you're welcome. That didn't exist before me. I asked him to do that, and now it exists, and now it exists on the Yojimbo 2. This is the same one that he's never done it before because I'm just picky like that, and I liked my, my deep carry clips. Uh, but when you do that, it makes the clearance from the scale significantly longer. So you need to ask Steve over at Blades We Love for the clip screws that are a quarter inch long, 0.25 inches on the titanium. And I want to say that it's got a, a, a letter ascribed to it. I actually have some hardware right here, which are the screws. So he's actually done this. We're going to go ahead and do the Yojimbo conversion. But the clip screws are the W screws. He denotes them as W length. They're really quarter inch screws. He assigns them by letter to make it easier to sort of sort through later on. But ask him for the W length or the quarter inch length screws if you get the deep carry compatible 
scales from Aramis. If you get the standard scales, the standard length screws that he ships should fit just fine. Now, what we're going to do is move these guys off of the screen and we're going to go ahead and get to our surgery. So here is our patient right here, the Spyderco Yojimbo. Ten minutes, five minutes into this video right here and we're just going to get started right now. So already going to just go ahead and start getting into it. Just going to take this knife completely apart. Every single screw has to come out. Everything has to come apart on this knife. So we're going to see all the way inside. Let's get my hardware going the right way. I really like this Torx bit driver from Weha and Boker. Strongly recommended if your knife has Loctite in it. The torque that you can generate from this awesome little driver uh, really, really allows you to open up these knives. It really works well for Spyderco knives because Spyderco always has some type of uh, some type of Loctite in their in their knives and everything. So I'm going to try to get through this video in one piece, guys. As you know, this uh, these types of videos are prone to issues. I have never disassembled this Yojimbo. I didn't want to go through the pain and misery of doing this twice. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do it all at once. So getting the hardware out. This is actually coming out very easily. In case you guys don't recognize, this is the Blade HQ uh, version right here in M4 steel and Jade G10. If you leave that compression lock compressed, it just takes this whole thing apart. Uh, so this M4 blade, I'm loving these M4, M4 blades because... Uh, I just really like the M4 steel. It takes such a fine edge and it's not that bad to sharpen and it's just an amazing, amazing steel. Uh, I really like it in this coated pattern because uh, it is not a fully stainless steel. All right, so here we go already with the minor annoyances. This wants to rotate instead of just coming out. And so you're going to have to do some type of modification to your plan here. Oh, I hate this so much sometimes. All right, let's see. Let me can get this screw out here. If anyone is looking for black DLC Yojimbo hardware, I gotcha. I gotcha. Let's see what we can figure out here. Sometimes Spyderco's construction techniques are just a little bit frustrating because they have all these pieces that don't necessarily uh, stick together. And so when you're disassembling these knives, you have these awkward moments where you can't do what you need to do. So here we go, trying to take this apart. Oh man, this is the worst when you can't get that to work. Okay, we got a T8. It's gonna have to counter torque it. So this is what you do. You grab this guy, put it on here, counter torque it right here. Uh, well, eventually, you can see me slip. It's always fun to try to do this on these videos. People are going to make fun of me, but trying to do it on the camera, you know, this is not exactly the same angle that I would use in real life. This is me just trying to show you guys how I would do it. There we go. That came out. Oh man, there we go, got one, time to do it again. All this Loctite just coming out on my table right here. Lots of blue Loctite on this knife, I'm noticing. So here we go again, tighten that in there. Counter torque it. All right, let's get that lined up. All right, there we go. It might look awkward, but it is a system that works, so there we go. It worked. All right. Always got to be able to do stuff like that. So this is a T6 then to take off the clip screws. Don't need these anymore. Don't need the clip even at all, so we're going to actually scrap all of this stuff. I even have another DLC clip, probably from my one of my pairs just sitting around like there. Might try to do a sale or something of some Spyderco hardware at some point. There we go. Got the frame out right here. Going to get this frame out as well. See if this just pops out. Something like this. Get the frame out. No, nothing. There we go. All right. 
Good. <laughs> Just right onto my blade. All right, so green jade scales are off. That was actually significantly easier than the paramilitaries because there's no lanyard tube. Thank you, thank you, no lanyard tube. So we're going to go ahead and move some of this ancillary stuff off of the screen here, stuff we don't need anymore. All right, let's see if we can get this little screw out. <sighs> Look at this now, stuck in here. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. All right. <sighs> Probably need more tools up in this place to do this the right way. Good, we got the T8s. Mm-hmm. Always got to be thinking of ways to undo all of what you've just done. Okay. That's not wanting to come out at all. I really jammed that in there. Okay, well, we'll just figure that out as we come to it. So we have the pivot. Have the pivot off. Have all this stuff ready to go. Let's move all this off the screen. Don't need any of this. Now I'll just go up here. And let's bring the scales. Let's bring the new hardware and let's get to work. I really need this to come off. So I'm gonna go and find my pliers, which I didn't bring. Good. That is the fun of these videos. I don't think I've ever done one of these where I haven't had some type of snafu, but as we all know, it's not the easiest thing to do. So we're just going to get these pliers and we're just going to go ahead and take this thing out. There we go. That works. Okay, good. Success. Now, let's put this scale on here. So you're going to take a look on the inside of his scales. Let's just appreciate how nicely made these are. It says designed by Aramis. And on this side, it says Marabu which I'm pretty sure that's his daughter's name. So that's very important to him. Let's appreciate in the light here, this beautiful blue tinted carbon fiber. And we're gonna install all blue hardware and a blue pocket clip. And this thing is gonna look sweet at the end of all this. So let's get all this ready to go. We are going to get the compression lock side, put in the compression lock side. We are going to get the other side, put in the other side. All right, this is the clip side. So let's go ahead and construct a little bit of this. Here. Oh, we've even got standoffs. I can get rid of all the standoffs too. That's how good Blades We Love is. They sent all the standoffs and everything as well. So we're gonna have a really good time here. This is gonna be a really good looking knife. So I can even get rid of this completely. Standoff, standoff, standoff. So the long standoff was at the pivot, at next to the pivot. Very cool, very nice quality stuff here. And uh, this is only able to be, you can only get these uh, hardwares in bronze, blue, and maybe purple, uh, but not in any other colors. But you can send it to be modified by your favorite uh, modifier. I had a set sent to my buddy Andrew over at Fanatic Edge and he dyed it green, if you'll recall, on my PM2 a while back. Uh, that was before I installed this new this new stuff that I've got. So there we go. That's one. I'm going to do this in a stepwise fashion. Install these standoffs so that we can put the whole knife together. Finger tight for now. Well, this is already looking pretty nice. The blue on blue was a good choice. Uh, so, Aramis offers lots of different materials. He offers G10. He offers various different types of carbon fiber. This is a keyed pivot on the uh, Yojimbo here, so that's nice. Allows you to construct it on this side. Uh, put it together so you can put the whole knife together. Good, there we go. 
All right, what I am gonna do is clean off these washers a little bit. This is still pretty clean from the factory. I don't really need to do a whole lot, but I'm just gonna wipe them off here with a general basic shop towel. I'm gonna set this back down. Oops, well, problem number one, you gotta put the, uh, <laughs> you gotta put the phosphor bronze washer on before the pivot. I forget that sometimes on these spideys. So we're gonna do that. Do do. Always fun. But this just shows you the ways to avoid problems when you're doing it yourself. So if you have a Yojimbo and you want to put some scales on it, this is the way I do it. Good. Phosphor bronze washer ready to go. Uh, wanted to say thanks to my buddy Tim. He goes by Tim Allen 321 He sent me this bottle of Knife Pivot Lube. This will officially be the first knife that I've ever used it on. So I'm going to put just a couple of little drops of it on the uh, washer right there. Just a little tiny bit. <clears throat> uh, since I have the blade open like this, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this down with a towel. And uh, my technique for preventing corrosion on these knives, since I have your uh, attention here, is to use... Whoa, where is it? Uh... EDCI formula. I gotta find out where it went, but I got it sitting around here somewhere. Uh, oh man. Uh, 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 where did I put it? Gosh, I probably put it over here. Uh, nope. Well, we'll just get out the other bottle of it. I got a Black Friday special on it. And here we go, EDCI formula, and I have a whole bunch of bottles of this stuff. So I'm going to spray it on the inside of the knife. I know it's coated in DLC, but you can never have too much corrosion protection. Just spray it on, wipe it off, spread it around, put it on the contact surfaces, put it on the inside here. I can clean up any excess a little bit later. But yeah, I like EDCI, keeps anything from rusting on the inside there. So we have a little bit of lube on the pivot. Oh man, this is looking cool already. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, like I said, put a little lube here on the pivot itself. I'm going to do that by oiling the inside here, just like that. Putting a drop on the inside like that. Perfect. Okay. Gonna get our other washer. Clean it off. Add a couple of dabs of this pivot lube like that. No more than that. Just like that. Phosphor bronze washers work well with some a little bit of lubrication, so it's always helpful. Uh, okay. Get everything lined up here. Just like that. Let's put the frame on first. Just like that. Good. Okay, pivot screw first. <clears throat> a lot of guys ask what this screwdriver is. This is a uh, Brian Fellholter screw it, is the name of this. It says Fellholter. Screw it. Uh, I don't often find these available anymore. They were for sale a couple of years ago. Just randomly I saw them for sale. There are lots of people making high-end titanium, copper, timascus, whatever drivers nowadays. They're not particularly difficult to find anymore. So uh, if you're looking for one, I just recommend getting on Instagram. Our friends over at Kerr Knives have been making some interesting ones. C-U-R Knives. Uh, pretty beautiful uh high-end materials, titanium and timascus uh, drivers over there. I think they've also done some in copper and brass. I really like this copper one. It seems to work very nicely for my needs. It's nice to have a spinning ball on the end like this. Really uh, very smooth. Took that down and put some knife pivot lube in there too recently. Okay. We're getting to some some good uh, some good tension there. Got some nice centering going on. 
Don't want to over tighten anything right now. Let's go ahead and put the clip on. This is very easy. So this is why I prefer to have MXG clips. So um, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I like to have MXG clips. I, I did. Uh, because when I do my modifications for my Spydercos, I'm always wanting these deep carry clips on these uh, modified knives that have the Arama scales. The problem that I have with the Casey Lynch clips, which are excellent quality, it's not that I don't recommend those clips, is that they are very difficult to put the longer screws into. In order for this to work right, you really have to get these long screws inside of these holes. And that's, I'm going to struggle with this right now. But uh, doing that in the Lynch clip is nearly impossible because the holes, uh, the, the clearance between the uh, big hole and the screw holes is not enough to allow you to put it in there. All right, so you got to navigate these things into these holes. Not the easiest thing in the world. There we go. I like to have these set in place before I put it down onto the knife. So I'm just kind of capturing these with my hands. Kind of a pain again, but heck, I do brain surgery every day. So whatever, dude, this is fine. <laughs> all right getting it in there just like that just like that man frustrating even for me okay there we go all three of them are on there and then the real win is when you set this thing down and all three of them fall into place and then you have enough clearance. So this is again why I like the MXG clip. When you screw these down, you have enough clearance not to mess up the, your clip. So if the clearances here are not long enough or not wide enough, it's hard to get the screws in and then it's hard to screw them down without scraping the inside of the circumference of this hole on the Lynch clips I've noticed. Uh, I've scraped the heck out of it and it made the thing look not very nice. And so I didn't enjoy that very much. There we go, tighten down. Sequentially tighten these things down. I recommend doing the two lower ones before you do the final top one. The final top one just kind of locks it in place. And bada bing, bada boom, we've got a fully dressed Spyderco Yojimbo 2 dressed up in Aramis Akhmadov scales. These are his grand scales in carbon plate, blue carbon fiber, blue hardware from our friends at Blades We Love. Clean off that screw so you get the full blue effect. Blue hardware from our friends at Blades We Love. And a blue pocket clip from MXG Gear. So I hope that this video was educational. Uh, I will use this as a reference if you ever message me asking me about how to modify one of these knives. You're going to get a link to this video. Man, that is nice. That feels really good in the hand. One thing that Aramis does, so I'm going to just bring these all out now so you can see how freaking sweet these are. Move all this out of the way. All right. So uh, here we go. Move all this. So his scales uh, are beautiful. And what he does do that's different than the standard Spyderco scales, these are very flat. They're totally flat on these side. They have this sort of, they have this, pattern, this peel ply pattern that really rips up your pockets. These things are a little bit more contoured, so they fill the hand a little bit more nicely. They're a little bit more rounded. It does increase the width fractionally, uh, but it's not tremendous enough for me to really care. And uh, it just makes the knife look so good. This is a really good looking thing right now with this blue carbon fiber and this blue hardware. Absolutely killer. Really like that. You're going to be seeing a whole lot of this on my Instagram feed coming up. So thanks you guys. thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was educational. And uh, I'll leave some links down below so that you guys can do this to your Spider Co's as well. As always, this is Dr. Frankie saying take care.